Now let us look at one more situation. Imagine you are a manufacturer of let's say this product. You are a maker of phones and you sell your product in let's say Dubai. You sell your product in Dubai. Now pay attention to the numbers. You manufacture this product for 40 rupees. Okay, it could be thousands lakhs, whatever. You manufacture this product for 40 rupees. You sell it to a distributor in Dubai for 100 rupees, nicking a profit of 60 rupees. The distributor in Dubai then resells it to the retail showrooms at 150 rupees. The distributor in Dubai makes a profit of 50 rupees out of this product. This is your business model. Now, a few weeks or a few years down the line, your sister comes to you and tells you, uh, hi, brother or sister, whoever you are, uh, we have this distributor in Dubai. Why don't I set up my own distribution channel in Dubai? So your sister is asking you that she wants to set up her own distribution channel in Dubai, which you think is a good idea. Why should I depend on the strange distributor? When my own sister can do that business, why do I have to depend on the third party? Good idea, sister. Go ahead. Here's your visa and passport. Chalo. Go to Dubai. Now, things get interesting. You have a distributor in Dubai who is your own sister concerned. You manufacture this product for 40 rupees. Sell it to your sister for 100, making a profit of 60. And your sister resells it in the Dubai market for 150. Life is easy. Now, a consultant walks into your office and tells you, Sir, my name is CS so and so. I have been studying your business model and I think there are some ways in which I can improve your business model. What do you think is a method in which this business model can be improved? How can you strategically improve? There may be a ton of solutions popping up in your mind. Pause your video, think about it and now we can resume. So how can this business model be improved upon? This is the solution that the consultant offers. So the consultant says, this is the product that has been manufactured for 40 rupees. Now you, the Indian manufacturer, please sell this product for 45 rupees to your sister concerned. You must make a profit of only rupees 5 rupees. Earlier it was 60 rupees. Earlier you make a profit of 60. Now you make a profit of only 5 rupees. Okay, I don't like that solution so far. But let's see. Now you sell it to Dubai to your distributor in Dubai. Who is your sister concerned? The distributor purchases this product and sells it as usual in the Dubai market for 150 rupees. Now your sister concerned is making a profit of 105 rupees, whereas you are making a profit of only 5 rupees. Why do you think the consultant has offered this advancement? I am confused. Are you confused? Do you want to think about it? The solution is very simple. The reason is that India taxes its SSEs at 30%. A normal SSE in India, it's taxed at 30%. The rates change according to the party who is being taxed according to the SSE. But generally, let's say the tax rate is 30%. Whereas in Dubai, there is no income tax. So now, you have altered your business model to nicely skip out on the tax. Now you, the Indian company, is making a profit of 5 rupees upon which you have to pay a marginal tax, whereas a Dubai person who is your sister concerned, your own sister, is making a profit of 105 rupees which is not taxed. You are escaping taxation. You are escaping taxation. This is one of the clever ways in which many entrepreneurs escape tax. Now, to plug that loophole, the Income Tax Act has introduced a section called Section 92, which states that, no, you are not allowed to do all this jugaad. You have to sell it properly. Early you sell it for 100, now you have to sell it for 100. Now you have to justify to the income tax authorities that 45 is a reasonable price. Is it reasonable? If it is a reasonable price, then a chartered accountant has to certify 
under section 92E, a charter account must certify that this is a reasonable price for which the sale is happening. If it is reasonable, how have you computed, how have you determined that this is a reasonable price? Now, this concept that I explained to you is part of a wider concept called transfer pricing. Now, every big consulting company has a separate division called transfer pricing, which deals with basically two aspects and they're very, very interesting. They are exciting. Come on, guys. Look at companies like say Tata Steel and Tata Motors. Now Tata Steel sells its steel to the Tata Motors company. Now you have a situation where sale is happening to a sister concern. When a normal sale happens, your objective is to get the best selling price. I made this for 40, I'm selling it for 100. If I sell it for 110, I'll definitely do that. Your objective is to get the best price. But when you're selling it to your sister concern, you're reaching a situation where the profit stays within the family. The profit stays within the group. Now, when Tata Steel sells its product to a company, say Tata Motors, the seller has to make sure that A, Tata Steel makes a profit, B, Tata Motors makes a profit, the group as a whole makes a profit, and is there a tax advantage? And is that tax advantage legal? Is it complying section 92 of the Income Tax Act? This is one of my favorite topics. Now, this transfer pricing as a chapter comes in taxation and in costing. At the final level, I have made a humble attempt at kind of breaking it down because it's a very interesting topic. And again, as in part one, my question to you is the same. What do you think? Do you think, yeah, I can't bother myself with all this nonsense, none of my business, let Tata still do whatever. Is that what you think? Or do you think, hey, wait, this sounds exciting. What can I do? How can I create new opportunities in this situation? What do I do over here? Is this exciting to you? This is one of the problems, one of the many problems that a finance manager deals with. Now, when you deal with this problem, you require knowledge in costing. You have to have knowledge in pricing. You need decision making analysis. You need a thorough understanding of tax. And if you're dealing with a sister concern in Dubai, it's not just domestic taxation, you also need to know international taxation, which is the double taxation, avoidance agreement and all that. There is a lot of knowledge. There's a lot of preparatory work that goes into making these kind of decisions. Do you think that these decisions are interesting, they're exciting? Do you think that you will be able to put the kind of effort to understand the nuances? What are the loopholes in tax? How can I edge this? How can I navigate through this scenario? Is that exciting to you? So this is another one of the topics that I put forth to my students. This is the kind of job that a finance manager will have to do. This is the kind of life that probably a chartered accountant will have. Many chartered accountants this is what they live for, to find solutions to these problems. The client walks up to your office and asks you, sir, this is my situation. I have a sister concern in Dubai. This is the product I'm selling. What do I do to reduce my tax? And now you have to offer a solution that is compliant with the law and saves your client a buck or two. So if that is the kind of life you want to have, if that's the kind of profession you want to have, welcome aboard my friends. You should do CA, it's an amazing career.